Hello and welcome to the Chicago Kent Evening Law Student Experience webinar. I'm Nicole Vilches, Assistant Dean for Admissions, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. I'm joined by Benjamin Rellinger, Meg Tierney, and Andrew Belzen, who are all second year evening students. To begin today's presentation, I'm going to provide you with a brief overview of Chicago Kent's evening program. I'll then turn the floor over to our panelists for introductions and let them discuss their experience as students in the program. After that, we'll use any remaining time for your questions. So to begin, Chicago Kent uh, was actually founded as a school for evening students. It was founded 130 years ago in 1888 to make legal education accessible to working men and women. So we have a long history of serving the needs of evening students. The admissions requirements are the same for all divisions and the full-time faculty teaches in all three. And I should mention we also offer a full-time day division as well as a part-time day option. And our evening entering class sizes are typically about 30 students, which provides a low faculty to student ratio. And as an evening student, she'll have class Monday through Thursday from 6 p.m. to 9.25 p.m. Uh, and as a first year student, if you're following the traditional schedule, you will have classes four nights per week, Monday through Thursday. You'll take a total of 22 credit hours in your first year. And then as an upper level student, uh, evening students can take eight to 13 credits per semester. You, can take, uh, you have to take a minimum of eight each semester, uh, but you can take a maximum of 13. And we do offer an optional early summer start that allows you to take criminal law in the summer term, which starts in late May. And that allows you to lighten your fall course loads. So you would actually have one less class in the fall semester. And that's been a very popular option with evening students because it allows you to uh, ease into balancing work and school and it gives you a slightly lighter load in the fall semester. And then our part-time students have access to all of the resources available at Chicago Kent. We try to make uh, as many opportunities accessible to evening students as possible. You'll obviously face some constraints uh, due to the constraints of your job during the day, but if we're able to make something accessible to evening students, we will find a way to do that. So with that, I'd like to turn things over to our panelists. Um, I'm putting up a screen with their bios, but I'm going to also have each of them introduce themselves and then talk more about their experience as students in the program. So uh, Ben, let's start with you. Uh, hi, I'm Ben. Uh, I currently work as a patent agent at McDonald Bain Holborn Berghoff, just two blocks away from here. I uh, started uh, working there and got interested in the law and uh, started the uh, evening program here. Before that, uh, I was in academia and uh, did research over at Northwestern. Hi, I'm Meg. Uh, I currently work at k &L Gates as a paralegal full-time. Um, I've been working for about seven years as a paralegal and finally decided to come to law school at Kent. I have been able to be pretty involved at Kent working um, with the Society of Women in Law and also on the Law Review. And uh, the evening program has been really uh, great for my schedule. Hi, I'm Andrew Belson. I uh, moved to Chicago about three years ago and became a patent agent at McDonald Bain and Humbert and Berghoff, like Ben. Um, thereafter, I enrolled at Kent in the evening program. Uh, I started, I did the summer start that Nicole had mentioned. I thought that was a good way to ease into law school. And um, at Kent, I'm involved in the Intellectual Property Law Society and the Honor Scholars Program. Do you want to each maybe talk a little bit more about your experience as students in the program, you know, what it's been like balancing work and school? Uh, I guess to pile on to the summer start, I, uh, a big part of, of doing the evening thing is balancing it with work and figuring out how much time it's going to take during the week, during the weekday, during the weekend uh, to make class work with school. And I think that summer start gives you uh, an easy way to kind of calibrate yourself before you uh, hit the wall. Um, yeah, it definitely does. You kind of figure out how long it'll take you to read. Um, I know some people who need to read on the weekends for their classes. I'm able to read during lunch for a lot of my classes or before class. Um, but I think it's very different for everybody. And I have also found that the professors in the evening division are very cognizant of our schedules. And, um, you know, we still get the same curriculum, the same quality of learning, but they're definitely aware of, 
you know, our other commitments outside of school. And that helps a lot. Yeah, and I would add, uh, I did a summer start as well, as I mentioned. And I also took two summer classes last summer, which was my second summer. Kent's incredibly flexible with offering summer options. If you want to defray your semester schedule, make it a bit easier. I also have, like this semester, I'm taking a class during the day at two in the afternoon, which if your schedule permits, can also allow you to do that, which is nice that you get to kind of plan out your own schedule. And there's a lot of accommodation for evening students understanding that their schedules are incredibly busy. Can you talk a bit about how you balance, uh, like how many hours you study per week roughly outside of class, how you balance that with your work? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. I. Like Meg mentioned, some people do the reading on the weekends. That That's what I do. I do the reading every weekend. So I'd say roughly, it depends on semester, but I spend probably four or five hours on Saturday and maybe a few hours on Sunday doing all the reading for the following week. And other than that, I don't do much homework during the week. I just attend class. Yeah, so I split mine up and I read on the train to work and on train from work. And then on my lunch hour, um, I find that I'd rather have my weekends free, but it's works just as well for me. Um, and I think overall, it's probably about the same, maybe five hours a week preparing for class. Um, it sounds like a lot, but it's, it's not that hard to fit into your schedule as long as you're committed. And, and I guess one thing to also note is you might be thinking, oh man, five hours of homework, uh, that might be difficult to fit in. Every week, uh, homework in law school is oftentimes just reading. Uh, so you can, uh, you know, if you have something that's really important going on one week, you can kind of defer some of that reading to next week and catch up if necessary. So it's not like, you know, oh, I missed my homework this week and, and now you've you know lost 10% of your, your grade in the class. Um, I think it's also, it's a different type of, of reading, which is why I'm, I'm hesitant to say how many hours I do right now, because it was more uh, my first year, just because it was still getting used to, you know, not just what the cases are supposed to be about, but also how do you read a case to begin with? Yeah, it's a very personal, I think, different for everybody. Um, and it definitely gets a lot easier <laughs> even after your first semester, so. Yeah, I think the summer start helps with that. Uh, you learn how to read cases, you learn how to make a case brief, which is just a small summary of the things you read for that week. Those kind of things help immensely and to only have to do that for one class while you're learning about what law school is like is another advantage of that summer start program. What would you say was the biggest adjustment for you starting law school? I think I would just echo what Ben said about it being a different type of reading. Going to engineering school for the last seven years, uh, the homework you do as an engineering student is incredibly different from the reading you do in law school. And just reading in general, I, I've never disliked reading, but the reading for law school is incredibly dense and just digesting it and understanding what you're trying to extract from it was a challenge. Yeah, I think on top of that, just the social aspect, and I know I think a lot of evening students have probably taken some time off or they're used to just working and they have families. Um, it is a little bit of a, a shock to, you know, realize your day is full until 930 um, and you don't have quite as much time to do everything you wanted to do. That being said, I don't feel like I've missed out on any, you know, great, amazing things that have happened. I feel like I, I figured out how to make it work and still have a pretty normal social life. Um, it just takes takes a little while to, to figure out how to do that. And everyone in the evening program is also in the same boat you are, so we tend to be close friends with each other and, and that fosters some social interaction. Yeah. And I'll, I'll pile on to the, oh my God, I'm not done until 9.30. Um, and, and I know that on the intro slide that we, uh, it said something like six to 9.30, four days a week. It doesn't have to be all of those hours. In fact, I don't think I've ever had it that bad. Uh, you do have some control over your schedule. Um, when you have, when you do have class four days a week, for example, it's not going to be all four hours every every day. Um, uh, that said, it is always a good idea to try to massage your schedule to only have two days a week, if possible. <laughs> What you can mostly do is an upper level student. Harder yeah. to do as a first year student. If you do the early summer start, you can have class three nights a week in the fall semester. Yes, I would say another that, good reason. I didn't find it. I didn't find it as bad as I thought it was going to be because it's genuinely interesting. I feel like the people who are in the evening program really want to be here, 
Um, and so I enjoyed coming to school. I, it was fun for me to be learning this new stuff. So, Yeah, and to echo that, nothing against the day students, but the evening students bring a very wide variety of backgrounds. So the discussion that's fostered in the evening program is very interesting because everyone has a different perspective. So you can talk about any um, student activities that you've been able to get involved with or how, how, to what extent have you been able to get involved with student organizations here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can start. Um, I work with the Society of Women in Law, um, and then for my first year, I was just a rep, and then this year, I've been the social media coordinator, uh, which is an executive board position. Um, they're super flexible about, part of the reason I took that position was because it's social media. I can do it from my phone, <laughs> um, but they're very flexible about board meetings and stuff like that, um, and then I also join the law review this year and will be on the executive board for law review next year. Um, I think that most of the time, if you just ask, you know, most everyone else's schedule is pretty free. So a lot of times they're happy to cater, you know, if I need a 530 meeting or if I need to do something at lunch, they're it's pretty reasonable um, with the people that I work with. I don't feel like being an evening student prevents you from doing any activity you want to do, which is really nice. Like everything's available to you. It's just obviously the constraints on your time, as Meg just said, are a little different than a day student. Uh, I'm, I'm in the Honor Scholars Program, which uh, you know we meet every so often, maybe once a month, uh, to work on projects and things. And it's, they've been accommodating to me, as Meg mentioned. Uh, and I'm also in Intellectual Property Law Society. Uh, attend meetings maybe once or twice a semester. Uh, I'm the total slacker in this realm. I, I attended the, the law school formal. I really do recommend it. It's more than worth <laughs> it. <than recommend. laughs> Great. Well, at this point, I'd like to uh, open the floor up for uh, questions from the attendees. And in the uh, webinar software, there is a question box. Um, so you can type your questions into there, and our panelists would be happy to answer those questions for you. Great, we've got some questions already. Uh, so our first question is uh, if there are any weekend classes or online classes. As far as I'm aware, there are not, but I do know that we had a class last semester that had, um, or last year they were testing out an online component where like right. one class a month or something like that was done online, which was really nice because, you know, just getting a free night uh, randomly once a month it feels great <laughs> and then to be able to do that from home so i don't know the extent that kent is going to continue to do that but we all really liked it yeah and as far as weekend classes again yeah i, I don't know of any at kent but there's an interchange program with loyal in which you can take some classes there and i know that there are some weekend classes there that kent accepts and there's kind of that overlap so great so next question is um what clinical opportunities are available for part-time evening students? And I don't know if any of you have had any, if you've done any or if any friends have, classmates that you know of. I don't know of any evening students who've done it. Yeah, not yet. Um, I think it's going to come back a lot to what your schedule looks like and, and even how close you are geographically uh, to the school. I know if you, you know, if you work not more than two blocks away, it's probably more difficult to just come in for a day class or a day clinic. Um, but I do know uh, some people who summered at our firm were part of like, uh, there's a Pat Pro Bono program that I would imagine, uh, I mean, it sounded like it was fairly, you know, uh, if it's not face-to-face -face advocacy, uh, it sounded like that was pretty uh, open. Yeah, and returning to what I said before, I don't think that there are any bars from you for participating just because you're a part-time student, but again, you'd have to work your schedule around it because all the evening students we know are so busy, I, I don't know anyone who's done it. So, yeah. And I think that has been the challenge for evening students in the past is that often because if you're dealing with clients and clients want to meet during the day, yeah. so a lot of, you know, if you're going to court, the court's meeting during the day, but if you have some flexibility in your work schedule, it's, it's something that you can investigate and look into and, and the school will work with you on that. 
Uh, next question is, uh, where do we indicate that we want to do the summer start option? So I can cover that one. Uh, we'll be sending out information about that um, through the admissions office probably in the next week or so. Um, and so what you do is if you're if you haven't applied yet, you apply for the fall entering class. Anyone who's admitted to the fall class, both full time and part time students um, can opt into the summer program. We've always been able to accommodate everyone who wanted to do it. So when we send out the notice letting you know about the summer option, you just let us know you'd like to do it and we get you registered from there. And pay attention to all of your due dates. I missed a class once because, or almost missed a class once because I was uh, lazy about that. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is um, uh, roughly how many applications do we receive for the evening program and um, do you have enough time to participate in additional activities such as moot court and legal writing as an evening student? So the number of uh, applications that we receive from year to year um, fluctuates and off the top of my head, I am not recalling the number of evening applications that we got last year. Um, we, I would say several hundred, but I have to get back to you with the exact number because it's escaping me right now. Um, in terms of activities, do you wanna maybe talk a little bit more about maybe how you got involved with law review? Uh, yeah, so there are two ways to get on a law review. You can grade on, which means your grades are super awesome and they just invite you on. I uh, wrote on, um, so it's sort of like an audition where you write um, a law review comment and then based on your performance, they will invite you on or not. And so I wrote on. Um, that was a, it's over the summer. It's a couple weeks of your time and it is not easy. But um, like, you know, anything worthwhile is doing. I don't think the moot court, uh, once you audition for that, I don't think it's easy once you get on, but uh, it's super rewarding and it's really uh, does a great job of preparing you for practice um, and just doing some stuff that you don't normally do in your regular classes. Okay, so next question is what is the start time of most evening classes? Six is the earliest of most evening classes. Uh, yeah. Is it usually there two? two slots yeah it's usually six or seven thirty is when the classes tend to start there's a few there, oh there's a lot at four yeah. if your work is flexible mm -hmm. and you can yeah. get here for four o'clock yeah. um, so next question aside from time what's the biggest drawback to being in the evening program if any getting home late yeah i would say time is really the i I think it's great. I mean, I think we've sort of touched on this a little bit. I think the people that are in the evening program makes it really interesting as opposed to people who are coming fresh out of college. Uh, we have several police officers, police officers, people in banking, um, just people from all different backgrounds, and it makes it really a lot more, uh, a lot more interesting and different um, than I think you might have in the day program. So I would say we might have the better end of the deal yeah. uh, if you're willing to deal with the time constraints. Plus you don't have to dress up as nice. <laughs> Taking a day class this semester, holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids. So is the evening program more team oriented or competition oriented? All my experiences at Kent in general have been very adverse to competition. Everyone is incredibly friendly, but that includes the evening program as well. I, I haven't noticed almost any competition that everyone's very collegial, including the professors, which is nice. I mean, we are part of a four person group of people who generally will study every uh, semester for exams. So it's not like people are, you know, hoarding their, their outlines and, you know, giving you bad advice that I've seen. Yeah, yeah I found it's really easy to catch up on notes or ask questions from people. I've never had a bad experience. All right, so next question is about financial aid opportunities for the evening program. So I can cover that one. Um, all students, uh, both evening and day students, are automatically considered for scholarships as part of the admissions process. And our scholarship awards are the same um, levels for both full-time and part-time students. So the only difference is that the part-time award is spread out over four years as opposed to three years for a full-time student. Um, and then for the remainder of financial aid, which is through the federal loan programs, um, part-time students are eligible for those. And the only difference is the cost of attendance budget is a little bit different because you're taking fewer classes, so tuition cost is less. Um, but other than that, evening students 
it's really virtually the same process for both full-time and part-time. So next question, how different is the part-time day program from the part-time evening program aside from time of day? Uh, so that's, it's again, um, really the time of day is the only difference and the part-time day students are taking classes with the full-time day students. So there'll be, you know, probably more students coming straight from undergrad, but still there are a number of uh, full-time students that have work experience as well. Um, but that, that would probably be the major difference, whereas the evening program, most people are working full-time jobs. Right, so next question, do you find it hard to balance being a student and working? And how do you find the balance? Occasionally, I mean, I've definitely had weeks or you know a month here or there where it was like, all oh, right, this is really gonna suck for a while. Um, I'll, I'll admit that I generally, you know, kind of default to, uh, you know, prioritizing work, uh, just because, I mean, being a law, most of your, your classes, there's really just the end of semester assessment. So, I mean, it sounds kind of bad, but you can make up some of those readings, make up some of that, you know, analysis, so long as you keep on attending class, uh, if you need to be emphasized. And, uh, yeah, it's a challenge for me, um, but I, I don't think it's any more of a challenge than I expected coming to law school. If you kind of listen to what we've just said about, you know, so many hours a week and this is when you're attending class, I, I don't think it's any more of a burden than that would give you a picture, paint a picture of. I, I think it's it's manageable, but it, of course it's challenging. Yeah, I same. I think it's very manageable. I think as long as you want to be here um, and, and you like the classes, I think it's more than manageable um just takes some getting used to and yeah finals are are rough finals a couple weeks it's rough but it's a couple weeks every semester you can handle it so when you were deciding on part-time programs uh, what were the factors that prompted you to choose chicago again one big one was the summer start program um, another one for me is uh, I wasn't interested in going on weekends, which I know is what Loyola's program is currently. So I, I didn't want to do that because I wanted to have my weekends other than homework mostly free. Um, and then I guess for me, the third big factor was IP reputation at Kent is very well renowned. And so that, that took the scales in this direction. Yeah, I also did not want to go on the weekends. Um, but I also have known, I know a lot of alumni who've come through Kent um, in Patton and other areas of law too, and they just speak so highly of it. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. Plus, my office is like two blocks away, two <laughs> blocks away. So <laughs> that's convenient. Even beyond IP, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I'm, uh, Kent is well-ranked relative to the other part-time programs that are in the city, so that makes it easier. Next question is, how many hours do you recommend someone work if they have flexibility from their employer to be able to, to manage both work and class time? As little as possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, we, ben and I have our hours slightly reduced by our firm. They, they acknowledge the fact that we're going to law school, so they've to buy uh, 15%, 10, 15%, something like that. Um, but whatever you can work out with your employer to make it easy on you, obviously, is a big advantage. But most most people who take classes with us have a full full load and haven't reduced it at all, I don't think so. Yeah, my schedule has just been modified. So if I have to leave, uh, like I leave early on Mondays to come here for a four o'clock class and I make that time up. Um, you know, if I could take extra hours off my work schedule, I certainly would. Um, but that being said, I don't know how much of a huge difference it, it would make in in what I do. Honestly, if you know, I, I think five or ten hours reduction of my work, I'd probably be about the same where you know as I am now. So, so can you speak about your experience with professors and with the grading process? Is it what you expected, or was it is it more difficult? Uh. <laughs> I mean, I, first of all, professors, I think for the most part, the evening professors have been great. And as Meg mentioned earlier, they really do understand some of them are evening students themselves. So they really understand kind of the perspective we have and assign appropriate amounts of reading and engage you at a level that's maybe a little different than they engage 
full-time day students, um, not in a negative way, in a positive way. Um, and as far as the grading, I think everything's on a forced curve, which I was aware of going into law school. And I don't think it's any more difficult or less difficult than you would expect based on that. You, you can sit in class and say, oh, there are 30 people here and they only give out three A's and you gotta, you know, that you gotta accept that going into the class. But if you are aware of that, I, I think it's manageable and reasonable. And that said, I mean, I know we've had at least one professor who was like, I've done the math, here's, you know, they, they have some discretion within the, the mandated curve, but he's like, I've done the math, I can give this many A's and this many B's and no one has to get, you know, half a person has to get a C. So, I mean, in my experience, they've been very kind. You know, hot, for lack of a better word. Yeah, and I, I think, as far as I can tell, I think it's super fair, uh, the grading. Um, and all of, we've, I think, lucked out. We've had really great professors so far. Um, so definitely don't think that, you know, they save all the best professors for the day students. They, they definitely uh, teach a lot of evening classes, too. What advice would you give future applicants um, who are about to apply? What do you wish you would have known when you were applying to law school? Apply early. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I think my best advice that I just generally give everyone applying to law school is just be sure. Um, like, be sure that this is what you want to do because it is a time commitment, it's a financial commitment. Um, and if you're sure, it's awesome. Uh, if you're not, I would imagine it's kind of difficult. <laughs> Another thing I would reiterate, or I guess I don't know if we've talked about this, but I came to visit Kent after I was admitted to kind of feel it out and come to one of the, the weekends where they bring people on campus and talk to professors and students. And as much as attending this webinar is great, I think that visiting the school, there's no better way to get to know it. And I was between Kent and a couple other schools, and as soon as I visited, I was not considering the other schools anymore and I wanted to come here. So I think it's a great way to, to experience the school. If someone wants to participate in the part-time program, would you wait to recommend we wait to apply until next year or still apply for this year? So I can take that one. Um, we are definitely still accepting applications. Uh, our suggested deadline is March 15th, which is still a few weeks away, but that is just a suggested deadline as well. We continue to accept applications after that date. So uh, there's definitely still time to apply. I would encourage you to get your application in as soon as you're able to. I mean, obviously it becomes more competitive the longer you wait in the cycle to apply. So if you uh, have your LSAT score already, go ahead and, and submit your application. If you're waiting for your February score to come out, uh, those should be out hopefully next week or early the following week. So get the application in as soon as you can, just because the longer you wait, the more competitive it will get. So I guess um, we're almost out of time. So any kind of parting final thoughts for students thinking about the program? Um, sure, I've had an excellent experience. It's been, um, I, I guess better than I thought it would be. I have made a lot of really great friends um, I have learned a lot and I, I enjoy it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I always knew I was interested in law, but actually being here and taking the classes, it, it's fantastic. And I think a huge part of that is the fact that um, the evening program is so interesting and has so many cool people and great professors. Um, yeah, it's been fantastic. Yeah, I would underscore that. I, I came to law school knowing I wanted to be a patent attorney, and so I was very interested in IP, but I was a little worried oh, I'm going to have to slog through all these other classes that I'm not really that interested in. But I have yet to take an IP class, and I've liked the vast majority of every class we've taken. It's, it's shocking how pervasive law is in everything you do, and there are interesting nooks and crannies in every aspect of law, and having informed discussions with professors about that during class has been great. So while it's challenging, of course, to go to law school every night, I think the level of discussion in in the classes has been phenomenal, and I like make, enjoyed it more than I expected to. Uh, I'll just make it a round dozen of repetitions and say, do the summer start? Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, that's good. 
Great. Well, thank you, uh, everyone, for attending the webinar this evening. Um, I realize there may be a, a few questions that we didn't get to answer or um, questions that come up after the webinar ends. So you can always reach out to the admissions office, and we are happy to answer those questions for you. Um, and any questions that we didn't get to, we'll also follow up with you uh, offline uh, with answers to those questions. Um, and for those of you who are in the Chicago area, if you haven't yet had a chance to come visit Chicago Kent, we do offer tours. Um, you can also sit in on an evening class during the semester. So please contact the admissions office if that's something you're interested in. Um, so thank you everyone for attending this evening.